Welcome to the Cinema Cartography. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. Try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash cinemacartography. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash cinemacartography for a whole month of great cinema for free. I'm just, I'm, I, I am, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting tired of hearing the same things from people and yet nothing being done about it. Talking about how bad things are now and the way that things are now, when at the same time they engage in all the stuff that they fucking complain about. Yeah, and they, it's living quite an artificial life as well. Yeah. I think the art community on the internet, it became quite a toxic space. One, there's a lot of competition based on numbers, which is absolutely insane. And it creates like this like this echo chamber effect that everyone has to agree with everyone in order to participate on this quote unquote art community. We see so many people that actually have something about them. Yeah. That I, th- I think in some part of them, you know, they, they, they want people to engage in better art. But then what they'll end up doing is instead of taking the time to do something constructive or something artistic, they'll take the lowest common denominator. I mean, that's that's the core of it, isn't it? It's making content. And it's like this endless cycle that you are essentially posting more of lower quality arts yeah. because you are making into content and then you, you have these blurred lines between what, what it's content here and what's art. I mean, art is something that it tends to be valued very little by a lot of people, but I think this is only making it worse. Do you know what though? The same people that will say that exact thing that art is undervalued and it's not valued as highly as it should be. They, they yeah, keep They'll, perpetuating yeah, this, yeah, the system of production. Yeah, yeah because, it, because I understand the interest and the morbid curiosity about... Something exa- so odd yeah, like Yeah, examining that. and looking at something like that. I completely understand that. But it's the fact that the manner in which they're going to do that is you're then... approaching it, yeah. Yeah, you're approaching it by creating... A fucking four hours. On- <laughs> online content if the anticipation is to change things to change people's demeanor then that's a good starting point there's a level of separation between you and that original content you're still stopping yourself from engaging with something valuable exactly to engage in something that you're still lowering your standards even if it's in mockery yeah and that's something that i used to i I used to see it lightly it happens a lot in the political sphere from both left and the right They just, they're just there to shock, but that lowers the conversation. And, and now we see that both sides of the spectrum politically cannot stand each other. I th- the, you, you said it perfectly though. It's every, you're still engaging within that sphere. Even if you are the highest of the intellect, if you are the grandest and the highest in the hierarchy of that sphere, you're still in the sphere. You're still, even at the peak, you're still the highest of the lowest. Something something that we would reference a lot in this, I think a core belief of it, is what's the maximum that you're willing to allow within your life? I'm interested in how the digital process though affected the actual process of making art. Affected the thinking, this idea that everything is self-serving, everything is for you. Mm. And I wonder how much that impacted literally that moment of you standing in front of a, of a paper, white paper with a pen, just either drawing or writing. I, I wonder how much of that internet thinking has affected that special moment of creation. Of course it has. Of course it has, because think about it. It was <clears throat> what we mentioned recently of the idea that when you fill your mind with something more valuable, with, when you fill it with high literature, I mean, to, and, and the way to fill it is to just engage with it more. Yeah. That's your point of reference. When you go back into your memory and into your thoughts, that's going to be there somewhere because there's already so much of it. When there's so much of just... Noise. Content. Yeah. That's your point of reference. That's what you access. That's what you end up siphoning your vision through because you're not engaged with anything intentionally. And so that's just there in your subconscious. I mean, there's no other way of getting ideas other than looking inwards. And if you're making an essay into research intentional research that doesn't mean going on blogs or going on other youtube channels it it means watching the film time after time after time with your notebook making notes and trying to understand what your perspective is yeah and i really miss that genuine curiosity and i think something else that's important is that 
is that if you want to improve your ideas, you have to know yourself first. Because yeah. you have to know what it is that you want to say. It, it, it would not shock me one bit if people were able to get out of this realm, to get out of this mindset, be on their own, and realize they don't have anything to say themselves. Yeah, and then work on that. And it's okay to realize yeah. that. It's okay to be scared, to feel like maybe I don't have anything to say, and then yeah. work on that. A few years ago, even at that time, I knew that I wasn't in a good place. Yeah. And in that time, I still wanted to make art. I look back on it now retroactively, now being a happier person, now being a person that has removed himself even more from this sphere which I've just felt was poisonous, to really having a clarity of thought, reaching a point where you really know yourself and you know what you want in life. Having that now, I look back on so much of my work and so many of my ideas that I thought were fucking genius, brilliant, I thought yeah. they were brilliant. I look back on them and I'm just looking at someone that was just reflecting the world back at itself. Yeah. Nothing came truly from within and I really thought it did, but all I was was just a vessel for everything else to be fed into. You know, I, I see that a lot, a lot, a lot. It was this new generation that we were talking about being educated vastly by the internet. And yeah. If you don't know deep down how you feel, you're always going to be trying to chase the next, the next big thing that either is going to make you feel, yeah. so then you can write, or it's going to be something that you're imprinting so then you can then start writing something. Now, we're always constantly being bombarded by information, by art, by this, by that. It's very, very easy to really get influenced and either end up paralyzed and doing nothing or end up completely absorbed. What that was doing to me was taking me more and more and more further away of finding my own true voice when it comes to poetry, art, filmmaking, making me drift apart from everything. When you look around now at this new digital age of artists, you can look at it beyond that, but if you're just gonna look at it, the realm of art, yeah, it's comprised of what seems to be artificial emotion, like manufactured emotion. Every feeling is just it's it's now just a mood it's just an atmosphere it's just an aesthetic yeah that's all it is but the only one that seems to actually permeate anything is depression yeah it's something which persists constantly behind the art is always the artist but if the artist is constantly lying to you about who they are then how authentic can their art be that's something brilliant that we were discussing earlier about yee yee which is the fact that we know we feel like we know so much about Edward Young by watching his films when in reality we know so little about him but it really allows the work to speak for itself and that's something that we've been looking for more and more and more and more and trying to encourage and try to encourage people to try to let their work speak for themselves allowing the work to just be the forefront Because we see so much essays about essays about essays about essays. And that that doesn't stand. It doesn't have the power that just going back to the basics often does. And, and that for me has been in everything. Choosing analogic photography over digital photography was a big thing for me as well. The importance of materiality in a world that's constantly more and more trying to reject and negate the yeah. material. I find it very hard to produce art without any sense of materiality, any sense of the physical, of, of because I think that's for me completely related to process. Yeah, and I think I think something that's interesting with that, what the normal perspective will be now is that something isn't validated unless it's digitized, unless it's in an online form. It's becoming more and more pervasive within each coming generation. Is this removal of everything within art that? makes us human because it does have that literal humanity within it i think we've been trying to advocate for sincerity intention and just slowing down trying to remove yourself from this productivity mindset that you have to produce thousands of pieces or scripts or whatever and really look one by one and try to make a legacy this idea that we can choose to shoot 20 self poses in a, in, a, in a film, in a row. We don't need to, to shoot thousands of pictures in a digital camera, but be intentional with every single one of those 27 poses that we have. 
there's a, there seems to be a very big barrier between what people want to do and what people do. If you feel like you have to be a certain way or create something in a certain way, then you see, for me, all I see is a waste of potential. Personal potential, individuality. And that's what actually going to make you stand out in any, any, any field that you're going to work with. Yeah, we're aiming to try to get people to realize that rather than engage and become the top of the pyramid that they're in, it's take a step back and really analyze. And create their own pyramid. Yeah. So that's a good way of saying that. We'd like to thank Mubi for sponsoring this video. Mubi is a curated streaming service, an ever-changing collection of hand-picked films from new directors to award winners from everywhere on earth. Beautiful, interesting, incredible movies. A new one every single day. Always chosen by Mubi curators. You can stream or download all of Mubi's movies anytime, on any screen, any device, anywhere. And you'll never see a single ad on Mubi. Right now, you can check the Mubi library a section where you can discover hundreds of great films that have been handpicked by Mubi's curators. Right now in the Mubi library, you can check Steve James' landmark documentary, Hoop Dreams, what is, in my opinion, one of the greatest documentaries of all time. You can try Mubi for free for 30 days at mubi.com slash cinemacartography. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash cinemacartography for a whole month of great cinema for free. Trust from those you love